Hello, you're watching Self Drive Television News. I'm Len Benedict. And I'm Heavy Man. The power base of Disneyland exile Ben Ali is crumbling in the face of the Tunisian people's continued resistance. Supported by anonymous hacktivists, independent journalists and human rights campaigners, the heroic Tunisian people have had enough of capitalist dogma. Unsurprisingly, the UN have still taken no action to help the Tunisian people struggle against the regime of murderous Mafia family boss Ben Ali. The United Nations of America established a six-month timetable for the Tunisian Mafia to get back in the game. Ben Ali's Mafia Prime Minister, Anucci, responded by murdering some more peaceful protesters before resigning earlier this week. Corporate media have now acknowledged at least a hundred people have died. While tensions escalate all over a world waking up to the consequences of global capitalism, the state-sponsored BBC interpreted a recent OECD report as concluding that the global cyber war had been overhyped. So, nothing to worry about then, right? Wrong! Various other corporate news organisations have interpreted the same report as a dire warning from the OECD of an impending cyber cataclysm. Apocalyptic perfect storm predictions about multiple cyber attacks occurring simultaneously with unforeseen consequences are intended to propagate fear and mistrust with a little truth and a lot of misinformation about the media's new bogeyman Cyber Terrorist. The terrifying Cyber Terrorist, whose weapon of choice is the cold hard blade of truth and whose terrible demands are freedom, justice and liberty. All this sensationalist rhetoric is intended to distract from what the OECD report really told us. The powers that used to be still won't officially recognise the cyber war for what it is, a war of ideologies, between the lies of capitalism and the truth of transparency. Peer-to-peer -peer networking has triggered a global pandemic of contagious courage, sending shockwaves through the dominant power structures. The internet has provided the next generation of debt slaves with the ability to activate their true potential, unleashing people power like never before. If they can afford to get online, that is. EMA, the Educational Maintenance Allowance, has been the latest victim of an ideology which puts profit before basic human decency. Dave Hugger Hoodie Cameron and Nick I'm a Sellout Clegg are introducing the youth to the consequences of global capitalism by depriving yet more of the country's most needy to line the pockets of the ludicrously rich. Having grown up with the internet, da youth are significantly more clued up than da baby boomers. Before social networking, indoctrination to the free market ideology left you feeling confused, isolated and depressed. depressed. As the World Wide Web connects more and more people with more and more information, the next generation of debt slaves has the opportunity to actually understand the problems of global capitalism and to do something about them. If they get off their asses, Your idealistic optimism never ceases to amaze me, heavy man. Corporate media bombard us 24-7 with hysterical scaremongering juxtaposed by tedious articles about reality TV celebrity nobodies. Most people care more about their totem sports team or soap opera star than what's happening in their own lives. What's happening in their own lives? You're right to an extent, Len, but could anyone be satisfied by a tedious stream of lies and misinformation in a world where the truth is no longer out there, but within a couple of clicks of a mouse? Corporate media are losing control over how the geopolitical pantomime is reported and people everywhere are finally starting to wake up. So, you're saying the seed of love and understanding that were planted in the 60s has been fertilised by its internet and is growing into a healthy, beautiful thing.